Hello and welcome to Inside the Game. In the week we had confirmation, notwithstanding the fact that the country has gone into level five lockdown, that we will proceed with this year's hurling and football championships as slated this Saturday in the game between Dublin and Leash at Crow Park. One you can see with us on Sky Sports and hopefully, fingers crossed, move all the way through till December the 19th and the football final in Crow Park. That is the plan. And the first tentative steps were taken last week with the resumption of the league uh, football and hurling leagues. That brought joy to many and definitely brought joy to the three men joining me for this edition of Inside the Game. JJ Delaney, Ollie Canning and Jamesy O'Connor. Jamesy, we'll start with you. It all got very real when we saw the inter-county scene return last weekend. It did, Brian, and we, we feared, I suppose, that we mightn't see you know, any inter-county activity going ahead. But thankfully, the football kicked off and it seemed to go off. Um, without any major incidents. Uh, you know, you had players obviously driving long distances to, to play for their counties, but, you know, all the protocols seem to be in place, all the protocols seem to have been followed, and um, and by by and large, it seemed to be a very, very positive start. Some very interesting results, some very, um, some exceptional performances that the Mayo footballers, I think, at 317 on the board at half time in their match against Galway, um, which left everyone scratching their heads, but great to see it back. And as I said, I, I think everyone's looking forward now to the Hurling Championship kicking off Dublin Leash and Crow Park on, on Saturday evening. Yeah, well done to Antrim as well, who beat Kerry in Tullamore. They returned to Division 1. That was the only hurling match in the inter-county scene. Uh, JJ, COVID-19 is going to overshadow this year's championship. That's without a shadow of a doubt. A uh, recent GPA survey, I want to get your thoughts on this one. The results of this... I'll give you the figures first. 52% said, uh, I want the season to proceed. 24% I want to play on only if the implementation of COVID-19 protocols is improved. And 24% said, I do not want the season to proceed. That's out of 1,695 responses. Were you surprised by those figures? Um, I was surprised, but actually when you sit down and think about it, um, it's all about the confidence you have as a player in your management, uh, management team and your county board, really, you're, you're putting yourself in, in their hands and make sure that protocols are in place and that you are safe going to the match, coming back to the match, and obviously you're, you're keeping away from infection because obviously these players will have to go back working the next day. Um, a lot of them will be teachers, a lot of them will be, be care workers as well. So it's very, very important for players um, just to put their trust in, in management teams. And I'd say, listen to all their management um, interviews after the games on, on Saturday and Sunday, they all said about the player welfare is a huge aspect of this as well. And it's very, very important. And as long as that says to the front, it's not about winning. It's about actually getting out there and getting the players out in the, out in the field. But make sure they're safe in getting to the match and getting home for the match. So it's not going to affect their family or, or, or their workplace or the community either. And health being first and foremost, the number one priority. But to keep the games going, JJ, I'm guessing the message that's been hammered home to the players is that there is so little margin for error all the players and all the people associated with the sides are going to have to do the right thing for a six, seven week period of time. Yeah, it's a huge thing. The responsibility for each individual player, um, they're go if they have something wrong with themselves and they're going to have to go get tested, it's bigger than any individual player, it's bigger than any individual team as well, or any collective team. It's all about the collective responsibility of each ind individual player going out there um, to make sure that when you go out into the field, you're at the full of your health and to make sure that you don't pass on anything to any, any other player either, like, so it's not going to spread around the, the actual country itself. But look, it has been very, very well marshaled so far within the club scene, but now we need to up it again for when the county team um, kicks off again. Ollie Canning, you're going to have a very different experience on Saturday working for Sky Sports in an empty Crow Park. Yeah, Brian, it's going to be definitely different. I think um, a lot of people in the media have been asking from a player's point of view, uh, what's it going to be like? But I don't think myself, you know, some players maybe would like to get the energy from the crowds that attend these games. And other players, in my experience, would have been, you know, very, very focused on the, the process and very focused on the game itself. So I think it is going to be a challenge for, for some players uh, going out in front of empty stadiums. Uh, maybe it might be easier for the management teams and, and, and the players to communicate uh, on the bigger days as we move on in the championship. Because from my experience down through the years when I was playing, sometimes it was very, very difficult, even uh, if you're in Crop Park for semi-finals or something like that. The, the, trying to communicate with each other can be difficult. So uh, that's probably a bit of an advantage for the, for the players and for the management teams. But it's definitely going to be a new experience for everybody. 
but I think people are really looking forward to the games at this stage. And, and I know ourselves here in, in, in Sky Sports, when we're doing the analysis, we're just really looking forward to it. Yeah, difficult in communicating is your excuse. Funny that JJ Delaney and James O'Connor, who are all Ireland winners, never had the same problems in Crow Park. That's something we maybe address <laughs> when we all get down together. Thanks, Brian. Let's have a look at the Lent- <laughs> Let's have a look at the Leinster hurling championship and let's see how it's all going to unfold. It will, of course, start with Dublin and Leash. The prize for the winners of that is a semi-final berth against Kilkenny. And whoever gets through that will play the winners of Galway or Wexford. The three sides that don't make the final in Leinster, as in Munster, will head to the qualifiers. Well, let's talk about that uh, Dublin leash game. JJ Delaney. I-, I was reading some quotes from Eddie Brennan, some very interesting quotes. He said, because, of course, they had that magnificent win against Dublin last year, a week after winning the Joe McDonough Cup final. He said, we're dealing with a different animal this year. If there is any bit of character in these Dublin lads, any real heart in them, We'll get the full brunt of that. We're going to be stare, they'll be snarling at the bit, and they are the team. We are the team that they want. This will be a different beast. He's done the team talk, Eddie Brennan for Dublin. What about what will he say to his own players? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 what what he said is what to be saying in the Dublin dressing room as well. Um, I think Matty Kenny though, was was very very happy when he seen that draw come out because again when you're going to a game and you think you should win and you come out the wrong end of things. You just want to go back and dress them. Would you want to play that game straight away as quickly as possible again? And um, this is what the Dublin have an opportunity to do it now um, come Saturday night. So as what Eddie was saying, I'd echo everything what Eddie said, but it's going to be intriguing what Dublin kind of comes out. Um, a few of their big players didn't perform there last, last year as well. So individual kind of motivation will come into play there on a Saturday too. So they're going to have to, as a collective unit, but as individuals, they're going to have to try and right that wrong, which they thought would happen last year and try and avoid the scenes that we see right in front of us as well and try to stop the at least I'd celebrate after the, the final whistle again. Yeah, some of the most magnificent pictures of last summer's championship. Uh, underdog status can be a luxury in a high-pressure game. Leash may have that with the bookies, but they won't have it in terms of the narrative, Jamesy. Dublin themselves, they had a handy win over Leash in the league earlier this year. You're, though, angling for them to do something a little bit different I'll put it to you, your suggestion, which we're going to hear shortly, is a little like robbing Peter to pay Paul. Tell us what you're, what you're predicting and you think that they may, they may do. Yeah, well, the, the, the speculation, Brian, is that, you know, they, they probably lack that bit of firepower up front. They lack maybe that, that ball-winning ability, particularly in the half-forward line. And they just couldn't seem to get maybe the, the, the type of ball you need to get into your inside forward. So Ronan Hayes, who, who looked good living on scraps, he, he did a couple of really impressive things in that in that game against Leash. But by and large, he was he was kind of starved of possession and Leash had a sweeper sitting in front of him, um, you know, for most of the game. So, the, yeah, the talk is that Chris Grummy, who has been absolutely outstanding in the half-back line for Dublin, that he's he's going to be deployed further up the field in the half-forward line. And we see him here against Kilkenny in Purnell Park a couple of years ago when he was imperious and, and I think, you know, was deservedly man the match. He gave an awesome performance, you know, up from the half-back line, drilling the ball over the bar. And, you know, th- as I said, the talk is that he'd be further forward. Sean Moran, who's played that sweeper role, we see him here again, about to put this penalty away. He's going to be further up the field. Leaves Owen Murphy there with, you know, flat-footed, with, with, with no chance. And um, so, you know, we won't know us until until the teams take the pitch and as the guys go to their positions on Saturday evening. And that's one thing that I'm really, really interested in. How, you know, how is this team, Dublin team, going to line out? Um, and are they robbing Peter to, to pay Paul? Because certainly Crummy on his day, if he's at his best, he's he's one of the best wing backs in the in, in, in the game. Ollie Canning, flip it around from a Leash perspective. If Leash could select a Dublin side and position Sean Moore and Chris Crummy in positions to benefit them, to benefit Leash, what would they do? Put them in the backs and put them up front? I think myself, uh, changing defenders like that in, into attackers, um, Brian, I think it doesn't give, it probably doesn't give the rest of the panel that much confidence if they feel that they need to to move the defenders up the field. Personally, I, I'm not sure if it's going to happen. I think from a Dublin point of view, uh, they may not have played to their powers against Leash last year uh, in the championship, but I think that there's more in this Dublin team. And for me, uh, the likes of Chris Crummy is a very, very effective guy in the half back and very strong physical player. Um, and that's where that's where I'd put him. Um, from from Leash's point of view, maybe maybe they'd like to see him going up the field. And just just if I can say a comment there on on Eddie Brennan's um, Eddie's Eddie's comments to the media about Dublin, and Eddie would have been an All Ireland winner as well, Brian, as you know. Um, he uh, I think he has <laughs> definitely learned a couple of lessons under Brian Cody. And and as you can see from his comments, I, I believe he's putting the pressure right back on Dublin. 
He's saying that Dublin are the team that need to come there and perform. I think my own opinion would be he's gone back into the leash dressing room and said to the lads, lads, don't worry about what I've said to the media outside there. Uh, he definitely is putting the pressure right back in Dublin's court here for them to perform the next day. And I, I, I think he's trying to take the spotlight off his leash guys and they'll be building up for this game. And he'll be trying to motivate the players to say, like, you know, challenging the players, can we do this again? Was it a once-off? You know, we're better than one-off performances. And, and they'll be looking forward to the game, I'd say, on Saturday. That that's leads nicely to my next question, JJ. They will have to, you would imagine, they will have to be better than they were last year to get over Dublin. If Dublin are a different beast, as Eddie Brennan says, and they'll be ramped up and they've, they've got they're somewhat embarrassed to get over, well, they will be better. So how do Leash get better? Yeah, at least look, they're in the, the Lee McCarthy's where, where they want to be there as well. Um, look, they're going to have to, the first 10, 15 minutes in the game last year, they actually set the tone. Um, they three or four points up, but they, they drove three or four wides as well. Before even Dublin got an opportunity to score, they should have been well, well in front. They got the goal. Um, they'll have to learn from their experience last year as well. Like They were ahead within that game all the way through there as well. So they've nothing to fear coming in there Saturday as well. Big plus for Dublin as well. Owen O'Donnell wasn't playing last year. He's a huge player for them. If he's back at fifth, he'll be full back and he'll be marching that full back line as well. So if he's if he's back in the round, he's a huge plus for Dublin. I think very, very good hurler, very, very tight marker as well. But Leash is going to have to take the game. But they were very, very good with sharp passing there as well in, in their game last year. And they mix it up. They tried to find Ross King in the corner. And that was their out, out ball. When they hit it long, they were hitting it into Ross King. And he was winning a lot of ball in that corner as well. So they're going to have to play to their strengths. Nothing to fear. As I said, it's a free shot at Dublin as well. As what Eddie was saying, he's putting all the pressure on Dublin. So why not go out and just express yourself and, and have, a, have a very crack at it? Nothing to fear. They played the same team as did last year, but they're going to have to work very, very hard. Uh, predictions on this one, JJ, we'll start with you. Who and by how much? I just think Dublin have so much improvement to do. Um, I just think I, the players' motivation after losing the game, it's a massive motivation for any individual player. And you want to go and mark the same guy you marked in the last game when you lost that game. So just on that alone, I think... I think the story of last year was Leash, Leash winning that, but we all forget Dublin on the receiving end of that defeat there as well. That motivation enough should be enough for that Dublin team to get across the line. I think they'll win it by three or four points. Jamesy? Yeah, Dublin by six, Brian, but like this is not a foregone conclusion. I mean, you know, the assumption is that Dublin will be fired up and Dublin will want to atone for last year. And I, I really loved what Eddie said. I mean, it's heaping the pressure on Dublin. I don't think that he wanted the Leash players wired for it. Um, I think again, if Leash keep it tight at the back, if they if they do what they did last year and you know force Dublin to kind of chase the game and force them to come from behind, they have a chance. But for me, Dublin by six, and I don't think they'll make some of the mistakes they made last year. Uh, Ollie, uh, Ollie Canning, we're going to finish with you. Next time we see you, of course, after this show will be on Saturday on Sky Sports Mix, five PM for that Dublin Leash game. You will be calling a win for who? Uh, calling a win for Dublin, I think that. It was a, a big high for Dublin last year. We had such a tight finish to the Leinster Championship and Dublin got through with a great win over Galway and we had the really exciting uh, draw match with Wexford and Kilkenny um, and, and they came crashing back to earth, I think, uh, with the loss to Leash. And I really do think that that, that would have really um, hurt the team last year and the management and I feel they'll make up for that loss this year. So I'm going for Dublin by four or five points. Yeah, well, it's to be expected that Eddie Brennan will have them bouncing off the dressing room walls they leave or head onto the hallowed turf of Crow Park on Saturday at 6pm. Throw in our coverage on Sky Sports Mix starts at 5pm. We've got a break coming up now. After that, we will have a look at Sunday's Munster Hurling Championship game between Clare and Limerick in the company of the boys and get their predictions for the All-Ireland Championship this year. That's on the way after this. Now, welcome back to Inside the Game. Of course, the league's got going last week and we're looking forward to the Leinster Hurling Championship match between Leash and Dublin that you can see with us on Sky Sports Mix this Saturday. Now, just before the break, we were speaking to JJ Delaney, James e. O'Connor and Ollie Canning about that Dublin Leash game. We were going to shortly look uh, forward to the Clare Limerick game in the Munster Hurling Championship, which will be next Sunday. I want to go back to something you said in part one, James, e., and it was uh, the hammering Galway received 
from Mayo. Pora Joyce said at the end of that, it was the most disappointing day, probably the most embarrassing day of my career. I'm 43 years of age and I've never seen a performance as bad to tell you the truth. I've set you guys the task of thinking back in your long and storied careers to your most embarrassing day in your playing career. We'll start with you, JJ Delaney. Top right. Uh, it's not really a moment or a day. It's kind of a career. It's my football career. Um, it spanned over two games in two years. First, first game, first year, I got injured. I went back then next year, and then the first game of the football championship the year after, I got sent off. So I decided that football it wasn't, it wasn't a game for me, so I just ended my career walking off the field that day after being sent off. With a pocket full of All-Ireland Hurley medals, you'll be OK. <laughs> James <E>. O'Connor. <laughs> Uh, Brian, I suppose, look at my, my first two years with Clare, um, first Munster final, uh, 3.27 to 2.12 against Tipperary. Dump tip out the following year and um, heading into the Munster final with real confidence against Limerick and got hammered, played brutally, didn't perform. And um, yeah, that was that was probably a low point. You know, Plenty of other bad days in league matches, Brian, and challenge matches, you know, where managers would have torn strips off us afterwards. But to do it on what was at that point the biggest day in my career, not perform and, and take that kind of a hiding from Limerick above all teams. Um, yeah, that, that, that's a low point, I think. And you overcame that. Ollie Canning? Uh, Brian, you, you remind me on most, most times we're on together that I'm winning an All-Ireland, Brian. Yeah, that's, pretty, that's probably my be- most embarrassing problem, so Thanks. <laughs> Mine's wearing a pair of white boots in a Wicklow Junior A final and losing. Uh, OK, let's, uh, let's have a look at the Munster Championship. OK, this is the schedule. Uh, the draw has been picked. Claire Limerick are first out uh, next Sunday. The winners of that go on to play the All-Ireland Hurling uh, Champions Tipperary. Uh, winners of that through to the final against Cork or Waterford. You would say that whoever makes it out from between Clare and Limerick will have done well to get to the final and win that Munster final. As ever, it's always competitive. It's always difficult. Uh, losers go through to the qualifiers in that. OK, we're going to start uh, previewing this game with you, James E. O'Connor. Uh, some significant absentees for Clare in this one. We're going to get your your take on exactly what that means for Clare. But let's, let's just have a look first and foremost. Who's missing? Podge Collins, of course, not on the panel this year. These are all All-Stars. Colm Galvin injured. Peter Duggan, he's overseas, I believe, in Australia at the moment. No doubt enjoying himself. And John Conlon is out injured as well. How significant a group of absentees are these four players, James? Four, as I say, four All-Stars. Oh, massive, Brian. And, you know, I don't think we have the resources. I think I think few counties would have the resources to replace um, the calibre of players that, that aren't going to be available to Brian. Uh, Brian Lohan at the weekend. I mean, you know, John Conlon and Peter Duggan in, in 2018 when we came all so close to, to maybe getting back to the final and maybe even winning it. Um, we're both all stars. Galvin has been fantastic for Clare over the last, the last, you know, since he came into the panel, this was in 2013 and, and, and he's a huge loss. And, you know, I suppose the thing about Conlon and Duggan, you know, we don't have a, a particularly, uh, you know, big forward line and these guys are our two primary ball winners and, you know, you see Shane O'Donnell on the ball here, giving it into John, and he put it into the back of the net um, against Waterford. You know, the question is, how are we going to be able to get the ball into Shane O'Donnell and into maybe Aaron Shanahan, some of the guys we've got in our inside line? You know, if we if, if we don't yeah, have this guy, Aaron Cunningham, uh, Aaron Shanahan, or Shane O'Donnell. Yeah. Sorry, James. I was just saying you, you would seem in a full yeah, forward look, line we, to have plenty of firepower. Yeah, we have firepower inside, but as I said, Duggan, you know, is good at the dropping ball. John Cannon has been our main puck out outlet for 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 recent years. You know, you go to guy and. You know, you don't have those two guys. And Galvin just class here against Limerick. And he, he arguably, if any, is, 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 is the biggest loss because he's a big game player, reads the game very well, a great, I suppose, telepathic understanding with, that, with, with, with Tony Kelly. And it's a massive blow to not have his experience and his big game temperament and all that he brings. And Podge, you know, we haven't really seen the best of Podge as consistently, you know, as, as you know, when he was, again, one of the players of the year back in 2013. So he's not available to Brian. So... Yeah, definitely down some some big names and I suppose a, a huge onus then on, on, on the likes of Tony Kelly, the likes of Shane O'Donnell, Aaron Shanahan, you know, to deliver big performances. And, you know, the, the word from the county, I think, is, is we're heading in with more hope than, op- you know, optimism or expectation because the form, we good form during the league, but, you know, things don't seem to be going as well as as um, as they were at that stage. And obviously a huge challenge, um, you know, with, with Limerick, you know, arguably that everyone's favourites to win. So up against it at the weekend. Yeah, uh, Limerick not without problems of their own. Ollie, uh, 
Mike Casey's out. Dan Morrissey expected to come in to, uh, as fullback. No Richie English. And, of course, Shane Dowling has retired, who's been a super sub of sorts for the, uh, for the Limerick side in recent years. They will, though, go into this red-hot favourites, and people will reflect back on their win last year in 2019, their hammering of Clare, and, and expect maybe more of the same. Yeah, look, I think over the last couple of seasons, Limerick um, have proved that they've got backup and they've got a good panel. They've brought a number of players into the team as well. You'll see maybe one or two come in on the forwards, one or two come in on the back. So John Kiley, you know, he's doing it. He's, he's playing it very well as regards keeping players hungry. Yes, they have a couple of injuries. Darrell Donovan got injured early in the year in Richie English, but I believe they're making progress. Uh, but Mike Casey is the latest uh, injury worry they had. So they have got a couple of, a couple of gaps to, to plug all right in their defence. Um, but we feel that, you know, Limerick, they've shown a lot of strength in their panel over the last number of years. And just looking, you know, talking to people lately in, in the general public and looking at the, at the papers in the last few weeks, um, Limerick are a lot of people's uh, tip for the All-Ireland this year. So we expect a, a big, big performance from them to get back into it. Interesting, John Kiley kind of said that they're not going to take anything for granted and he's trying to insulate his players, I suppose, from, from the talk that's going around because they are going to go into that game as favourites, especially with the lead, well, especially with the, the clear players that, that are missing uh, in the, the coming week. He's, he's absolutely right, JJ. Uh, in what Ollie's right, absolutely right in what he said. The, the management would not want their players to be hearing uh, James O'Connor tell you how many injuries that Clare have and how poor their form has been, how everybody is fav- Limerick are everybody's favourites to, uh, to take it out this year. What did Brian Cody do to isolate you from that sort of talk? Because that talk surrounded you and your side for the whole of your career. Yeah, well, the, the talk was out there, but we, we rarely listened to it, to be honest with you. The reason being that we were only concentrating going on our, our starting 15. We knew we had a panel, and Limerick have that panel out there at the moment as well. And it, it's just competition for places. Um, it's all about getting the jersey 1 to 15, whatever number's on the back of it, doesn't make a difference. Once you're out there on the Championship Day and, and giving your best for your county, that's what it's all about. And that's what John Kiley has as well. He's after blooding a few guys over the last couple of years. If Dan Morrissey is going back full back, Paddy Lachlan might go in in the wing, or will they bring Kyle Hayes back centre back? Um, as we've seen against Kenny last year, he came back and done a good job in TJ Reader as well. So he has options, um, he has options up front there as well. So, but the, what I like about John Kiley is he has a settled uh, squad and they all know they have a style of play and they know exactly if whoever is 1 to 15, they know exactly how what John Kiley is expecting in regard to work rate and style of play. And that will benefit Limerick coming in there on, on Sunday as well. And whoever comes out on top of that one will have to rest as quickly as they can, recover as quickly as they can, and get back on the horse the following Sunday against Tipperary, the reigning champion. So it's a difficult few weeks ahead for the hurlers and footballers uh, at inter-county level. There's no doubt about that one. Okay, prediction time for that uh, game. JJ, we'll start with you. Who takes it out? Um, I think Limerick are going to win. Um, I just like their team. They're like their physicality really more than that'll come a lot into play this time of the year too. Um, I just see that with the few injuries and absentees that Clare have out, out, out on their panel at the moment. I just think Limerick will be too strong for him, to be honest with you. With Aaron Gillan, he's getting better and better year on year as well. He's just our marquee forward as well. And if Clare have any opportunity of beating Limerick, they're going to have to shut him down. Um, it's easier said than done, though. But I think Limerick are going to win by four or five points. Ollie Canning. Yeah, I'll agree with JJ. I think Limerick are, are going into the game favourites, and rightly so. And it just goes to show you, just on, on James's analysis there of, of the players, that they were very, very important players that are out for Clare. And I think they're going to feel that loss. And I just feel, you know, we, we have probably maybe haven't seen the players uh, in the in the Clare panel over the last couple of years coming into the team and making a difference. So I think they'll struggle to replace them players. And I, I'm going to go for Limerick as well. Bye. I'd say five. Okay, James, I want to do something a little different with you. Clare win this game. What went on? What happened for Clare to win this game? They would have to bring huge intensity, Brian. Um, find a way, I think, to, to, to get, you know, Shane O'Donnell in particular, Shannon Hurd, the guys in their inside line, find a way to get those guys on the ball, um, in space. Um, and that, that to me is going to be the big challenge. But if, if, if they bring the intensity that maybe they didn't bring in that, in that championship game last year, where Limerick literally... You know, had the were able to do what they liked at will. Um, so that's the starting point. Got a good player intensity, savage work rate. And I know these things are cliches, but Claire have no hope if they don't have that intensity and that 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 
you know, willingness to work hard for each other at the weekend and get the ball to the uh, the shooters in the inside line. Big game players, Tony Kelly has to perform. But if himself and O'Donnell, um, Shanahan, Aaron Cunningham, if these guys have a good day at the office, clear of a chance. But I can't see beyond limit at the weekend. OK, uh, you can't because we'll have a look at your All-Ireland predictions as well. Uh, JJ's and Ollie's too. Here is what they think. Jamie's has gone for Limerick to take out Munster, Kilkenny in Leinster and Limerick to be All-Ireland champions once again. JJ has Tipperary to remain All-Ireland champions and Ollie has also gone for Limerick. Tipperary in Munster, interestingly, Kilkenny in Leinster, but Limerick to win out in the end. Well, we can't wait to see you guys on Saturday on Sky Sports Mix at 5pm. Here's a little reminder, the Hurling Championship, Leinster Hurling Championship We'll all start with Leash and Dublin, Crow Park, 5 p.m. Sky Sports Mix for a 6 p.m. throw-in. We'll be back next week for another edition of Inside the Game when we will focus on the Football Championship, 7 p.m. Sky Sports Mix next Wednesday, Inside the Game. Thank you very much to Ollie Canning, James D. O'Connor and JJ Delaney for your company. The very best of luck to you all next Saturday. I will be watching, gentlemen. <laughs> and uh, good luck to the teams of Leash, Dublin, Clare and Limerick as they start the 2020 uh, All-Ireland Hurling Championship. Till next time on Inside the Game, thanks for your company. Bye-bye. Sky Sports. Feel it all.